There's just no other way to do this. Um, NVIDIA, I completely retract my previous apology. The GeForce GTX 1660 Super is literally a GTX 1660, but with GDDR6 memory. It's no more, it's no less, and if I was as lazy as you, I would just end the video right here. Except that this card actually gives us a great opportunity to see just how much of a difference a generational leap in memory technology can make to what is otherwise the same card. So watch on friends, because there's more to this than meets the eye. And even if you don't end up buying one for yourself, there is a good chance you're gonna end up recommending a 1660 Super to a friend on a budget. The most interesting part of this whole launch is the features, even if they aren't exclusive to the new cards. First up is what Nvidia calls Null, Nvidia Ultra Low Latency, an obvious Me Too version of Radeon Anti-Lag. And while you might be thinking, well, yeah, Linus, but they've had that for months now, and you'd be right. Before, it was incompatible with G-Sync. Now, you can enable both G-Sync and Null at the same time, which means you don't have to choose between responsiveness and smooth, stutter, and tear-free output. Then, there's the image sharpening support that is now built into the NVIDIA control panel, rather than requiring GeForce Experience's freestyle overlay, and... Great? I mean, I didn't really get it when AMD introduced Radeon image sharpening, and now it's spreading. I mean, don't get me wrong. If you like it, then it's great that it's in the control panel. Only problem is that it looks horrible and you're utterly tasteless for liking it. No offense. And anyway, the big new feature includes support for applying a sharpening filter already anyhow. So, okay, if you've never heard of reshade or sweet FX before, Essentially, what it does is hook into the game and provide a way to customize the aesthetic to your liking. There is an impressive list of presets available for all kinds of different games, from tune shading all the way up to hyper-realistic HDR effects with every step in between. And every little knob and dial is tweakable by you, the user. Well now, NVIDIA is including reshade support in GeForce Experience. That means you no longer have to manually copy DLL files into each individual game's folder in order to add and tweak those filters. They're right there in the overlay that you may or may not already be using. Now it doesn't support all filters with all competitive titles and non-official custom filters are only supported on games that explicitly allow them, but this is a really cool first step and is big news to the point where, I mean, who knows, maybe this is the feature that'll win over a big chunk of the GeForce Experience skeptics out there. As I alluded to in the intro of this video though, all those features are rolling out in software for the entire Turing lineup, and for all intents and purposes, the hardware launched is just a GTX 1660 with a memory upgrade. Fortunately though, it is a big one. Going from 192 gigabytes a second to a whopping 336 gigabytes a second with GDDR6 RAM is a big deal because up until now, the lowest end card that you could get with memory that fast was the RTX 2060. So just how memory bottlenecked was the 1660? To find out, we set up our test bench with a fresh Windows 10 install on the latest BIOS and drivers using NV Clean Stall. And it didn't take long to validate NVIDIA's claims that the new card is close to a 1660 Ti. Remarkably, we were just one or two frames off at most in Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Borderlands 3, even in our percentile minimums. It looks like gaming really was memory starved. Now we do diverge a little bit more in Rainbow Six Siege, albeit still while maintaining over 100 FPS, and CSGO for its part seems to care very little about the extra memory bandwidth, but we would expect nothing less for a, well, a less memory intensive title. So take note guys, if you play mostly older or graphically simple games, the super might not make that big of a difference. Speaking of which, while productivity isn't this card's major selling point, and the difference isn't major, it is still an improvement over the 1660 non-super in some areas, like Blender. And it actually overtakes the 1660 Ti in V-Ray and Octane, where its higher core clocks and fast memory are more important than its lower CUDA core count. Otherwise though, we've got improvements across much of SpecViewPerf and then, 
not much else. It's clear that this is a gaming card first and a content creation card second, with the only exception being the inclusion of Turing's excellent NVENC engine, which offers X264-like hardware encoding to mid-range gamers and especially streamers, along with anyone else who might appreciate it. Taken together then, we have a strange situation on our hands here, where the weaker GTX 1660 is going to stay within about $20 of the Super, while the TI is going to cost a cool $50 more with very little extra bang unless you want to overclock its extra CUDA cores. So Nvidia essentially obsoleted both of those older SKUs, but then didn't discontinue them. The good news is that's Nvidia's problem, not yours. So for anyone who's looking for a solid 1080p and sometimes 1440p GPU, and especially anyone that wants to get started with streaming their gameplay, this one is kind of a no-brainer. With an asterisk. The RDNA-based Radeon RX 5500 series is on the way to replace AMD's aging RX 500 series that, quite frankly, just couldn't keep up in modern titles in our testing. So then, 1660 Super is the current lightweight champ, but until we know how the entry-level RDNA cards perform, and what price they'll launch at, it's hard to say, go out and buy it now! So get subscribed so you don't miss our upcoming review of those other cards. Another source of hesitation for us is that as advocates of deal hunting used hardware in this particular price range, we really liked some of the deals that we saw on 1070 series cards and Radeon RX Vega 56s, some of which can be flashed with the Vega 64 BIOS for improved performance. With that said, we fully understand that not everyone is comfortable with buying used PC parts, and the used market is both volatile and eventually runs dry. So, with that in mind, NVIDIA, good work. I make no apologies whatsoever about recommending this card. So hope you liked the video. If you guys enjoy DIY PC hardware, we did a recent video testing out some mystery meat Chinese CPUs that you guys might like. We're gonna link that below. See ya.